Hey guys, this is Dave Johnson and this is Dennis Aronson. Um, we're here today with Lake Michigan Angler TV. Uh, we're here to share with you guys our experiences as you know new salmon anglers on Lake Michigan. Uh, we come to you from North Point Marina out of Winter Harbor. What made me get into salmon fishing? Um, well, I'm, I'm a multi-species angler out on the Channel Lakes, which is one of our local lakes here in Illinois. Um, you know, I go different places, whether it's in Illinois or Wisconsin, and fish quite a bit. And we've done quite a few salmon charters, either out of North Point or even or Kenosha Harbor. And um, I'd always wanted to use my boat for salmon fishing, but I always thought my boat was too small for it. And um, after meeting Dennis, come to find out that Dennis is using his boat for salmon fishing, and he had introduced me to Lake Michigan Angler, um, Rob and Mike over there. And um, that's really how I got into salmon fishing. You know, myself, I've been fishing for salmon just this spring is my this is the first time that I fished for salmon. Dennis has been fishing for a little over a year himself, but um, I think some of the biggest challenges are just knowing what baits to put down, at what given time to put those baits down, um, at what speeds, at what depths, you know, just really understanding what column that what column of the water column you should really be fishing in. And, you know, I think, you know, one of the biggest ways that we've overcome some of those challenges, and it's still a work in progress, is networking. Uh, I think networking is by far um, the best thing that you can do for yourself as it relates to a new salmon angler and even a seasoned salmon angler. Uh, networking with local, you know, salmon fishermen that are here at the harbor, um, giving Rob a call over at the store, giving Mike a call at the store. Um, getting yourself involved in some of the Facebook groups, um, getting involved in some of the salmon, you know, unlimited, sam Samorama, whatever it may be locally, um, just getting affiliated with more people, more groups, and just, you know, getting the conversations going on. What's working? Where is it working? Um, and just really getting a better understanding of how you should be looking even at your spreads, you know. Um, one thing that we've struggled with often, I feel, too, is you know, not really understanding how much the current really plays as it relates to how your baits will perform in the water. You know, oftentimes we may have even in the past have kept certain baits in or just changing, let's say for example, if it's a spoon going to a different spoon when the reality of it is, is we probably should have just pulled the lead lines all together because of the current. So um, as time goes, I think it's just, it comes with practice. It comes with being on the water more and just paying attention to how your, how your spread should look. And, um, you know, I think, you know, as time goes, we'll definitely get better at it. Yeah, so what kind of boat do I have? I run a 1650 Fishhawk, uh, so just under 17 feet. I have a 90 horsepower uh, outboard. That's what I use to troll with. Uh, I throw a couple buckets over the sides to manage my speed. I pick my days wisely. I'm a teacher, so I'm free all summer. I don't have to force myself out on the weekends, and I can just pick very carefully days that will be comfortable and safe. Uh, I fish a lot with my boys, and I uh, want to make sure we're good to go. Yeah, so uh, what type of boat am I running? I'm running a uh, 2021 uh, Crestliner Raptor 2100. Uh, it's a 21 foot boat. Um, it has a 300 uh, Mercury Pro XS on it. Um, we primarily use the 99 kicker along with the um, Encoda Altair in the front to steer. Um, and like Dennis said, the biggest thing is just picking our days wisely. I mean, we use a number of different apps that allow us to really understand, you know, what directions the wind the wind is going. But not only what directions the wind is going, but more importantly, you know, how um, how deep the the waves may be, whether it's a half a foot wave, a foot wave, and we just pick our days like that. So I mean, today's fishing conditions were, you know, although the weather report may have said it was only going to be maybe a half a foot or a foot. I mean, we were probably in more so a foot and a half to two foot waves. Um, you just you just control it. You know you control your speed. Um, you know you utilize you know the waves to your advantage, um, and just remember that you're in a small boat. You know safety is everything. I mean me personally, I always wear my life jacket, of course, and um, and, and and just go from there. When you're fishing in the current, obviously without the fish hawk, you can still check the directions of your lines. You want to make sure they're not crossing too much. Uh, some of our dipsies did start to cross a little bit, so we just adjusted our direction of our troll to make sure everything was lined up. Um, it was pretty wavy and uh, lots of current wind for the uh, long lines as well. So um, our planter boards were not running just right until we made subtle adjustments with the direction of the boat that helped out. Even then with all the current that we had, uh, the long lines just weren't producing. Um, 
So we ended up switching more to dipsy divers uh, and then focusing on that along with the downriggers. And again, just kind of watching to make sure that the, uh, the lines were running well. Dipsy took a hit. I'm not sure what we have on here. I think it's a flash or flash. Nice pull, Mo. On the salmon candy. So I don't think the dipsy popped. There it goes. You got it. Still feel it back there? Yeah, I still feel it now. Yeah, it's pulling. Yeah, I don't remember what we had on this one. What is this the uh it's a flash or fly. I forget which one. I think that's the, uh, the green dot with the, with the flashing light on it, I believe. With the green pinkle. Yep, that's what it is. Is it this one? Oh, yeah. King on the downrigger, down 55 feet on the Dragon Slayer with the Bullfrog. Yeah, so as, as it relates to today's spread and the equipment that we use, um, all the equipment is Magnum Metals. Uh, we use Magnum Metals downriggers along with Magnum Metals trees. Um, immediately we, th we throw the downriggers out, they're the fastest ones to put out, so we had flasher flies on the downriggers. Uh, from there we went out to our dipsies, and on our dipsies we also ran flasher flies. Uh, from there we threw out some lead, you know, from three, five, seven, eight, and we ran uh, spoons on those. Um, I want to say we only had one hit on the eight color, um, which made us then eventually um, bring down the leads and then just throw a 200 cop rod and really focus on the dipsy divers and the riggers considering the, the currents that we were, we were fighting against. Yeah, so what was working, uh, just right off the bat, we caught up, uh, got a couple coho uh, on uh, the Dragon Slayer flasher along with the bullfrog fly uh, that was working well for us uh, so we did end up switching up a few other lines two similar setups uh, some were white flasher flies some were uh, the chrome and uh, that's what we that's what we went with I slowed it down All right, we have the downrigger down 50 feet. Once again on the Dragon Slayer, Bullfrog. Nice coho by my man Dennis. There he is. <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs>
Yeah, he is. All right, so we got our we had our Magnum Dipsy down. I uh, forget which flash or fly is on here. I'm thinking we may have a king, though, ladies and gents. We'll see. I'm pretty sure that Dipsy's popped by now. It had to. Have. He's just holding on like a log. We just took a nice, another nice chunky coho. I want to say this, this setup has brought in what four fish already today. Had the the uh, dragon slayer with the bread and butter all today. In fact, you turned, you turned it. in fact, I went ahead and threw a slider on there, and that's what's got us. We got two fish on <laughs> double bubble. But I, I threw a slider on this one when you guys weren't looking. <laughs> that's a net job right there. That's a net job right there <laughs> with the blue knight. <laughs> Ended up getting a triple. That's the first there. I was super You would have thought good. we were crappie fishing with two fish on there, huh? <laughs> I thought I pulled the crappie you know, another line somehow because I didn't know that you that slider Yeah, on. I put that slider on there. Yeah. So um, when we think about you know how the fishing was today, it was good. Um, you know we had a few doubles, we had a few, we had one triple, and um, but we had a lot of moments where it was kind of just dead and nothing was happening. Um, so we just really wanted to just you know make our figure eights, understand the current, understand the direction that we need to be trolling, paying attention to the speeds when, when we were getting strikes, so that we can maintain that speed and direction. Uh, because once we narrowed it down and you know we were going the right direction with with as it relates to the current, but more importantly with the right speed. I mean, that's when we would get our doubles and triples on, on some of the same areas that we were already fishing on. How much the current really plays as it relates to how your baits will perform in the water. You know, oftentimes we may have even in the past have kept certain baits in or just changing, let's say for example, if it's a spoon going to a different spoon when the reality of it is, is we probably should have just pulled the lead lines all together because of the current. So um, as time goes, I think it's just, it comes with practice. It comes with 
being on the water more and just paying attention to how your how your spread should look. And um, you know, I think you know as time goes, we'll definitely get better at it. Final wrap up, a report of how things went today. We figured out in a pretty specific and small area as far as the water column goes between about 110 and 130 honestly was probably the best and we stuck to that so we did make a lot of turns uh, between going trolling mainly east and west to stay in that area that water column we're marking the bait marking the fish um, like we said earlier pulling the long lines allowed us to fish that tighter area with a little more control considering the wind and the current um, flasher flies was producing by far the most i think it was what the dragon slayer Mm -hmm. With a bullfrog. Caught about 50% of our fish, maybe yep. more. Um, so yeah, we adjusted. Uh, didn't run nearly as many spoons as I thought we would have starting out the day. Made that adjustment slowly and it paid off. We probably had almost 20 strikes. I mean, we had quite a few probably co-hosts that would just strike strike our baits and then just spit it out. But um, we, ended up, we ended up bringing in 10 fish today. Um, we've got two kings and I want to say the rest are all coho. Nice chunky cohos. So yeah, so why should someone get into salmon fishing? I mean, it's just unreal. It's unmatched to any other type of fishing I've ever done. I mean, when I tell you I've become an addict, I'm a, I, hey, my name is Dave and I have a uh, sickness and it's called salmon fishing. Um, it's just when that king hits the line, when the coal hits the line in the spring, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's unmatched, you know. Um, it's so tough to even put a, you know, put a synopsis to it, but, um, I primarily fish for, for, for walleyes and crappies and things like that prior to salmon fishing. And just to be able to use an even more versatile spread to me is something that I really enjoy. Um, I like the fact that, you know, I can bring many family members even on the boat. I think, what was it, you know, three days ago I brought my dad, my uncle, my cousin out on the boat and it's all fish that everyone wants to even eat, you know. Um, everyone's got this health kick and what more fun do you have going out catching it, you know. Um, I actually purposely even bought this boat so that I can take my son and more of his friends out. I had a smaller boat before, I have this one now, and now I can take six kids out, you know, um, and have a ball, and, and they love it. They love the thrill of it, you know, when the, when the, when the drag starts going and we get the net ready, um, it's just nothing like salmon fishing. It's just, it's, it's unmatched. You know, I say anyone that has a buddy that has a salmon boat, or just any boat, I should say, um, get out and try it, you know, go swing over to Lake Michigan Angler. Um, one great thing I like about them is that they don't just try to sell you a bunch of stuff. You know, I had a funny joke earlier that I mentioned that, you know, I, I'd go in because I got this kick, kick from YouTube of all the different spoons I need to buy. And yeah, sure, maybe four of the five, you know, Rob would actually recommend, but there was one out of the five and he's like, well, no one else has come in here and bought that. So in other words, you can buy it, but it's up to you if you want to buy it, but you don't need to buy that one. So that's the big thing too, is that, you know, um, it's one big family that are willing, just a lot of people are willing to help because everyone wants to see you succeed so that you can come back with your report. So that's why I like salmon fishing. Hey guys, thanks for joining us. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Um, hope you guys learned some things. Just want to encourage you to give this a try if you haven't. Um, it might seem intimidating getting out in the big lake, the gear that you, you might need, uh, but stopping by Lake Michigan Angler, Rob and Mike can set you up with the bare minimum. When I got started, it was just the bare minimum. What do I need to get out in the lake and catch some salmon? They set me up. Uh, from there, of course, there's more you can do, but you can check them out, Lake Michigan Angler. Also online, lakemichiganangler.com. Hey guys, thanks for watching and good luck out there. Tight lines.